This video is brought to you by Design Code. So like I said, I was out in Brazil for a year and seven months, and with that I forgot a whole lot about programming. So when I came back, one of the first courses that I actually went to was Design Code. I actually used them in the past, and I learned a whole lot from them. And right now, because of Swift UI and all these changes, they really help out a lot. But they also teach a whole lot more stuff in Design Code. They, do, they teach Swift, After Effects, React, and a whole lot of other stuff. So go ahead, link in the description down below, and check them out. Anyway, back to the video. Hey guys, how's it going? Been a while. Sorry if this video is going to be a bit rough, but today we're going to be learning about how to do a list application. Like I said, Swift UI is something new to me, and I'm trying to study the basics about it as well. And a list application is a great way to start. So this will be one of the first things that we're going to do today, in which we're going to create a basic list application where we can create items, where we can delete them and move them. So let's go ahead and get started. So of course, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is go ahead and build a Swift application. So go ahead, open up Xcode create new Xcode project and from there you're gonna click a single view application give it whatever product name you want and from there so let's go ahead and explain a little bit about what Swift UI does so here we're split up into a structure with a content view and a view and then we also have the structure of a content view and previews so what we're doing here is this content view part is where we're building the whole application normally you would do it in a ui view controller but now they're wanting you to do it inside of this view and from within this view this is where you put all of your elements so as you can see right here we have var body some view and then we put a text field and one of the cool things and one of the cool things about swift ui is it's a little bit of a mixture of programming with code as well as programming with a user interface and so you can kind of see on the right side there's my canvas on this canvas, I can still click on that text and I can edit it. I can make it bold, I can make it thin, I can edit the color. And what happens is as I change that, it also changes the code. And this is really nice because in the past, when you edited on the interface builder, it would actually change the things in the interface builder, but you wouldn't really see that in your own personal code. So you ended up being lost. But now because of Swift UI, you don't have that anymore. As you change one side, it also changes the other side. And this is really nice because as you're building the application, you can kind of preview what your app's gonna look like. But anyway, so to get started, we're gonna go ahead and put this all inside of a navigation view. This navigation view will help in the future. That way we can actually move between screens and do other cool things and then we're going to put this all inside of a vertical stack or v stack and so they have v stacks and h stacks and z stacks so we have vertical stacks that go up and down they build object upon an object upon an object as well as a horizontal you go object upon an object upon an object z stack is a little bit more confusing because you actually have an object, an object, and an object. It's your Z axis. And so for our case, we're building a list application. So it's only gonna be a vertical stack for now. And then inside of our vertical stack, we're gonna go ahead and put a list. And then inside of this list, we're gonna add some text. And as you can see, when we put our text in there, it built basically a table view. And from that, you can copy and paste that text and it would build upon that list. But what we wanna do is actually put real data in there. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is go file, new, and create a new Swift file. And from within this Swift file, we're gonna go ahead and import Swift UI and also combine. This will help us to combine the information from one file to the other, or from one data set to the other. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and build a task. So we're gonna say struct task and put this as an identifiable. And from within this task, it's gonna ask how you're gonna put an ID. So I'm just gonna write var ID is equal to string. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and write var to do item is equal to string as well. So basically this task is gonna be something that's gonna be observed. Um, in the future, you will see this a little bit better. Is that Swift UI is specifically looking for this type of data set. It's specifically lo looking for more tasks. When another task is built, it'll look for that. And so we're trying to identify each of those tasks. But what we need to do with all of these tasks is put them into an object that can be observed in the future. And so we're gonna go ahead and say class task store colon observable object open bracket close bracket. And from within this, you're gonna go ahead and say at published var tasks will be equal to an array of tasks. And you put that right in there. And with that published, I'll explain this a little bit better in the future, but basically what it is, is you're trying to bind those tasks 
You're trying to bind those tasks to our list. And I'll explain how that happens in just a minute. But that is it for our task store and our task. So when we head back to our content view, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an observed object in which we're first gonna import combine. And this variable will be an observed object in which we're gonna say var task store will be equal to task store. So we're basically creating a variable off of that class that we just built. And here where it comes where we're using that publish, where we're actually observing the object inside of it. So we're gonna go ahead and say list and inside of those parentheses, we're gonna say self.taskstore.tasks. And then outside, inside of the curly bracket, we're gonna say task in. And then within that text, we're gonna go ahead and add task dot to do item. That way the task that we want in our list will appear in the text. And now if you build and run it again, you should see that hello disappear because we don't have anything in our task store right now. So let's go ahead and make a way that we can add things into the tasks. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a title. I just like creating a navigation bar title real quick. So right outside of the list here, we're gonna just say dot navigation bar title and put as tasks. And you should see as we live preview this that we have now tasks, just a text at the top. And now let's go ahead and create a text field that people can write into. So I'm gonna go ahead and say var search bar colon some view. The same way that we did with the var body some view, we're gonna do the same thing for search bar. So var search bar some view. And within that, we're gonna say h stack, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and let's put a text field into it. So with this text field, I'm gonna go ahead and put a placeholder there, enter in a new task. And it's just gonna be a command for the person. Then with this other part here, we wanna put a binding string. So basically what that means is as this text field is being edited, it's gonna bind with that variable that we're gonna put into it. And as the text field, as we type into the text field, it's also gonna change that variable. It's really neat actually. And so let's go ahead and create that variable. It's gonna be at state var new to do colon string. And then with this, we can't le let that string just be nothing. It's gonna give us an error. So we're gonna say it's equal to open quote, close quote. And also with this search bar, I'm gonna go ahead and add another button. That way we can take that text that we have in our text field and add it into our tasks. So first off, go ahead, create a button. It's gonna give you a button with an action and a label. So with the action, let's go ahead and create a new function called add new to do. So func add new to do, open close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And we'll add things in there in just a minute, but go ahead, go back, and within this label, go ahead and say open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and add text, add new. And that's gonna go ahead and add a button and it's gonna give you that text. And there you have it. So now we have our search bar. I actually should have given that a better name, but there you have it. <laughs> so now we wanna ha take this search bar and add it into our view. So the way that we're gonna do that is inside of our V stack in our body, we're gonna put it right above the list and just type in search bar. And as you can see, I added it right in there, but it's a little bit too close to the, to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and say dot padding, open close parentheses and boom, now it looks pretty all right. You can make it look a lot prettier afterwards. So now going back to our add new to do item, we're gonna go ahead and put that new item inside of our task store. That way as our task store is edited, it'll also update our list. So let's go ahead and say task store dot tasks dot append. And for our new element, we're gonna go ahead and add our task. Go ahead and say task open parentheses. And what do we want inside of our tasks? So uh, like I said, it has an ID and also a to do item. So for our ID, I'm gonna go ahead and say our ID will be equal to taskstore.tasks.count plus one. And we put that inside of a string. Really, we should do something a little bit better to have a unique ID, but for now, this'll work. But for our to-do item, we're just gonna go ahead and take that variable that we created that the text field is editing and just put, plug that right in there. So that's gonna say new to do. And so now if we were to build and run this inside of our canvas here, you should be able to type in right into our text field, click add new, and it'll add it right into our list. You can type the next thing, boom, it'll add it right into our list as well. It was pretty simple to get that part done. Now one thing that's happening that I don't really like much is when you click add new, it doesn't delete the text field. So you can go ahead, like I said, it's binding. So you can go back to your add new to do item and you can say self dot new to do will be equal to open parentheses, close parentheses, just blank. And that'll automatically reset the text field when you say add new. So that makes it look a little bit prettier and gives a better user feedback. But now we have our tasks, but 
what if I'm done with the task? What if I want to delete one? What if I want to move a task? Well, let's do that too. So in order to do that, right where we have our list, we're going to have to reorganize that a little bit. So we have list self.taskdoor.tasks, and we're going to actually take that part out and put it inside of something called for each. Now for each is another Swift UI thing that Apple created. And so basically what for each does is it observes those observable objects and edits the code according to it. And so this adds for a lot more variety in terms of deleting, moving, and other things. So right where we have list, we're just gonna say list, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, like we had it before. But now with our for each, we're gonna say for each, open parentheses, self.taskdoor.tasks, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and say task in. It's basically the same thing. You're just plucking, moving it from list to for each. And then inside of that for each, that's where you want to also put your text. Right outside of this for each, you're going to say dot on move perform, and it's going to perform an action. But with this function, we actually have to create it ourselves. So right down beneath our variable body, we're going to say func move from source, and that's going to be an index set to destination, and that's going to be an integer. So this index set, it's a complicated list of variables that actually say exactly where in that list or in that row that we are editing. And then we're gonna move that to a certain destination. So with this, I'm gonna say taskstore.tasks.move from offsets. And so the offsets, we're gonna of course put our source to another offset and we're gonna put our destination. It's pretty simple. And so one of the first things that we need to do in order to edit our list is to create an edit button. So right beneath the navigation bar title, I'm gonna say dot navigation bar items, and then you're gonna put the trailing. You can put the leading or trailing, but trailing is gonna be on the right side. And then inside of that, you're gonna put edit button. They have a pre-made one and it works perfectly. And now as you can see, as we build and run this again, as we add some new tasks and then we click our edit button, you can see we have these little lines. As we hold and drag on those lines, we can actually move from one item to another. Works perfectly. Now that's great. Now let's, let's see how can we delete these tasks. So just like we did with on move, we're also gonna do with on delete. So go ahead and say dot on delete perform and then we're gonna create a new function. This new function, we're gonna call it delete. With this, we're gonna say at offsets. These offsets are exactly what we were talking about before, an index set. What row exactly do we want to delete? And so we're gonna say task store dot tasks dot remove at offsets. So at offsets is, uh, is something very important that we need to put in there. And with that offset, we're gonna put exactly the offsets the index set that we created, that that function on delete is passing to our function delete. And so back into our on delete, we're gonna go ahead and say self.delete. And now as you can see, as we build and run this, as we click edit, it also creates delete signs. So you can click on those delete signs. But also another thing they can do is you can just swipe and drag and delete based on the swipes as well. It's really simple. And that's basically the to-do list. Now, obviously there's a whole lot more things that you can do to this application, but for now, this is a great start. So for instance, you can make sure that these items that you're creating are saved in the background. You can also make sure that the items that you do delete, they're saved as things done, you know, other things like that. But for now, this is a great start. And this is where you can learn the basics of how Swift UI works. And from there, grow on doing many other things. For instance, right now I'm also working on a social media application, and many of these steps were used to work on that. Anyway, I, I really like Swift UI. I think it was actually a great addition by Apple. I do see a few bugs here and there, or maybe I just don't understand the code enough, <laughs> but right now I'm still learning, I'm still growing, and yeah, you guys are along for the ride. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more videos, and be sure to hit that like button if you want. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.